Welcome everyone to the L7C podcast. We're back NBA playoff edition today. We are going to be previewing the 2022-2023 NBA playoffs that are going to be taking place at time of recording uh, this Saturday, or in theory, they've already been taking place with the play-in. So we got the NBA aficionado with us, Mr. Evan Debo. How are you doing today, sir? I'm doing good, Martin. It's a uh, good Good to hear from you. Good to uh, be back in another round of playoff discussion, and uh, I'm excited. Today's the today's the official start of the first round of the 2023 NBA playoffs. Yeah. So for our fans, we got a lot we're going to be talking about. We're going to talk about the play-in um, that's happened the past couple of days. Then we're going to go into the round ones. You know, if you've listened to us, we give our predictions, thoughts, and that. Then we're going to talk about the award finalists. But before we do that. We're going to kick it back all the way till October, our very first NBA pod of this basketball season, and see how close we were with the 10 teams that were uh, picked, that we picked. And Evan hasn't heard this yet, so you're going to get live reaction from him. I just finished listening to our episode last night, so I could get this down for y'all. Let's go. Evan, do you want to hear how we did in the East first or the West? Um, let's go East first. Okay. So the East first, we both had Milwaukee being the number one seed, and they were the number one seed. Um, so that's one for one for both of us. Number two seed this year is the Boston Celtics. Obviously, this is before when we did this, all the trades and all the craziness that happens with the NBA season. I had the Nets at number two. You had Boston at number two. So you are two for two right now, man. Um, number three, I had the Celtics, you had the Sixers, the Sixers are the number three seed, three for three right now, Evan, you are three for three, we both had the Cavs at four, so you are four for four, if this was the old playoff format, you already got the first half completely right, number five seed, um, I had the Sixers and you had the Heat. Number five, surprising enough, is the New York Knicks. But to give you credit, Evan, you had the Knicks in the playoffs. I did not. So just again, but you had them a little bit lower. Uh, Number six, Evan's right back on track. You had the Nets at six. I had the Heat at six. So you got five out of six in the East completely right. Number seven was the Heat. No, number seven, we picked the Hawks, and it was the Heat. Number eight was Atlanta. We had Toronto. Number nine was Toronto. I had the Bulls at nine, and you had the Knicks at nine. And then number 10 was the Bulls, which you had at 10. And I I don't know why the hell I went this way. I had Charlotte at 10. So, Evan, a majority of the seedings, man, you actually nailed. Um. And let's just say on the Astros part, um, who's the number seven seed after the play-in discussion? From our predictions or from, like, real life? From our predictions. We had the no, Hawks. Real life ended up being, yeah, Hawks now. Hawks and we'll get the seven seed, which we'll recap in a second. I mean, yeah, I mean, there's so much. I mean, when we're, when we're taking shots, this is, this is probably about, I mean, I should probably should have gone and played the lottery that day if I was going to get that really right. Um, I mean, because I, I think it's, it's, um, it's informed guessing, um, you know, that we do. Mm-hmm. We couldn't, um, you know, predict the Nets just completely cut and bait with the, the Kyrie Irving and Kevin Durant experiment. Um, you know, I, I have my hesitancy that Kyrie can string together because he has not shown us he gets to string together three months of playing basketball. So I think that's why I initially had him a little bit lower. Um, as high as I was on the Cavs, um, you know, I, I, I'm glad I kept myself in check and didn't have them any higher than they needed to be, but also was realistic to listen. I think injuries absolutely hampered this team last year, and they are they are a home court advantage team, and they ended up being that. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's so many different moving parts. There's so many different, um, you know, things. Uh, I think it was good on the east side of things this year that there were so many teams that, you know, every team battles injuries. Um, but for the most part, most of the teams at the top had their horses 
throughout the season. So I think that helps. And you don't get that every year. We could pick the same folks heading into the next season, kind of in a similar order. And then you're one tweak of an ankle or tweak of a knee from, uh, you know, a, a Jalen Brown or Jason Tatum going down or Giannis going down. And then that just changes your whole seating format. But, um, you know, by and large, you know, these were, these are the teams that, you know, while the seedings might have been a little bit, you know, different here and there that, you know, you know, outside of outside of the, the Charlotte thing with, you know, uh, Bridges and that ongoing domestic violence piece and then, you know, the injury to ball that, uh, you know, we, these are the, the horses we thought were going to be in the, the, the best 10 in the East. Yeah, no, I, I agree, man. I, I agree. It just... Obviously, since we're doing these in October, like you already said, with all the craziness that has happened since then, and still, especially with the lower seeds, still getting a majority of them that were in the playoffs and in the play-in correct. Like you said, I like that term, informed guessing. We had a lot of cha- we had a lot of changes. I think this year in scheduling that might have really definitely helped your teams that. Um, you know, could have historically slipped up a lot with this this pod baseball scheduling, right? So mm-hmm. we had, you know, you'd, you'd go see, um, you know, uh, do kind of a, a back-to-back, you know, Cavs would go to Miami and then they would play a game on a Tuesday in Miami. And then they play that same team again on Thursday. Um, the, in these pod schedules, I think that's more conducive to teams, um, you know, either splitting games they historically would have lost. If you were you're traveling on to the next city. If you were going on to Orlando or going on to a different venue, you're changing hotels, you're changing flights, um, they're extending a road trip. So I, I think potentially, you know, for your teams that are more durable, that have more depth, um, you know, they're they're prepared for that a little bit more. Um, I think so that that assisted the win column um, as opposed to years past. You know, maybe there's some more fluctuation there in terms of getting some more losses on the calendar just for such long road, road streaks, you know. No, I agree. I agree. Then when you move out west, this is the one where we got, <laughs> we got we got some teams right. It's just seeding and again, like the trades and all that was a little different. So these were the top 10 teams in the west. Uh, we had the Golden State Warriors at number one. Um, obviously the new number we had Denver Nuggets were the number are the number one seed. Um, the number two seed, I had the Clippers, and you had Denver. Number two is the Memphis Grizzlies. Number three, you had the Clippers. I had Memphis. Number three, the Darlings, the Sacramento Kings. Uh, number four, you had Memphis. I had Denver because we had different ones. And number four was the Phoenix Suns. Uh, number five, we both had the Pelicans, and that's where the Clippers landed. Number six, I had the Suns. You had the T-Wolves. It was the Golden State Warriors. Number seven, oof, I had the Mavericks. You had the Suns. It was the Los Angeles Lakers. Number eight. I had the Timberwolves, and you had the Mavs, and it was the Timberwolves. Uh, Number nine, we both had the Lakers. It was the New Orleans Pelicans, and another one. Number 10, you had the Kings. I had Portland, and another darling who had a 0.1% chance. It was the OKC Thunder. Evan, thoughts on our picks in the West? Um. Yeah, I mean, the, the Suns acquisition of KD, um, you know, the trade deadline obviously kind of gave him a shot in the arm where we thought, I think Chris Paul was going to fall off, or I for sure thought, you know, old Chris Paul was, was going to fall off for sure. Um, you know, they lose, they lose a lot of depth in that trade. But, Martin, the biggest takeaway I want to I do right now is let's go ahead and do – I'll let you start off. You don't know what you're doing yet, but I'll let you start off because I know you've got thoughts. Let's let's do our eulogy for the season that was for the Dallas Mavericks. Oh man! <laughs> oh, it's for people. Obviously, if you listen, you know they got Kyrie Irving. They gave up a pretty hefty price to get him. 
which on a flip side, you're just thinking if you were just going to do this, you might as well have just resigned um, Brunson in the summer. But that's a whole other issue for another day. When they got, they were at a point where they were as high as the fourth seed in the West. And then they steadily dropped. Then there was a, they went to the seventh. And then for people, if you don't know, they did not make the play in game. They they didn't make the playoffs. They were in a elimination game. I forget. Was it against Indiana? Who they had the elimination game against pretty much where they sat everyone. And we like played, played the first quarter and they sat. Yeah. And. If that isn't indicative to some of the stuff that we've talked about on previous podcasts, I, I don't know what is, because in my mind, I don't, from if I'm a player on that team, sure, a top 10 pick, but you don't know if those picks are going to come out. We have a chance to make the playoffs like and have a shot, and you elect to go that route if I'm a player on Dallas. I, I don't know how I like trust management stuff going forward, because I thought that was an utter disgrace. And embarrassing for a the West. This team was the Western Conference runner up last year. And for them to get a better player and just just get killed. It's embarrassing, man. Like I just there's a lot of questions. Obviously, you can't fire Mark Cuban. He's the owner. That's not happening. But just looking at that, it's like if I'm Kyrie, which do I want to come back if they give me a max contract? Do I want to from Luca is like, hey, how much longer am I here? Because now I might want out of here. Like it was just bad. That that I understand people tanking when you quote unquote don't have anything to play for playoff wise, but to do that on a grand stage, that's I've never seen anything like that. What were your thoughts on that, Evan? Um We've got all kinds of ethics issues. We've got all kinds of um, issues. We've had um, issues with um, the integrity of the game here. And that was reflected with the NBA who did an investigation yesterday, slapped Mark Cuban with a $750,000 fine for a quote from Joe Dumars, um, former Piston, with Bad Boy Pistons. Uh, now working with the NBA, the Dallas Mavericks' decision to restrict key players from Phillips participating in the elimination game last Friday against Oza Chicago um, undermined the integrity of our sport. The Mavericks' actions failed our fans and our league. They demonstrated through their actions and public statements the organization's desire to lose the game in order to improve the chances of keeping its first-round pick in the 2023 NBA draft. That pick should fall, I think, 10 or 11 or so, but, um, you know, $750,000 isn't, isn't nothing. Um, you know, Mark is uh, just I mean, sleeps in a bed of cash, sure. But, um, you know, it's it's warranted. Um, I would love to see them take a draft pick from him. I think they should take you know, the top I mean, 10 pick away. That would really send a message. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So I, I think it was interesting. So, you know, Jason Kidd in the hot seat when you have a season like that. You know, there's a lot of comparisons to the first LeBron run and, you know, you've got a generational superstar talent, um, you know, who impacts the game in so many ways. What are you doing to support them? What are you doing to give bench depth and, uh, you know, put a team around them that's going to win before they get dissatisfied, they don't sign contracts and they leave. Um, And kid's been in the hot seat and he very publicly, he got on the stand after that game and he said, I was directed by my supervisors um how to approach this game in terms of minutes and everything else and he he dog cuban and he dog um uh the gm whose name eludes me um but he wanted to know and listen i mean they're likely going to come back and fire me but that was saving face for wherever jason if that happens where jason kid's next stop would be to say listen like he was in a crappy situation. He just went to the West Finals last year. Um, and, you know, based on how this team's constructed, Martin, they gave up Dorian Finney-Smith, Spencer Dinwiddie, and a later future first for Kyrie Irving. I'm putting on record now, Kyrie Irving's not returning. You know why? Because the one constant you can predict with Kyrie Irving 
and as Kyrie Irving packs up his bags and Kyrie Irving leaves. And I think I think Kyrie is interested in going to the Los Angeles Lakers. I think there's Los Angeles Laker um, interest in acquiring Kyrie Irving. Still don't know how that would do path wise though. Yeah, I, I'd have to look at the numbers again after their the Lakers recent trade. It was a possibility before um, they brought on some uh, some of the new folks, Jared Vanderbilt, um, uh, Luke Beasley, what have you. So I need to look again on the, the space side of things. Um, but I, I I think Dallas knows they have to give him a sizable contract to retain him to justify their bad decision before. But I really don't trust Kyrie Irving enough that. He feels vested in a part of the Dallas community, Martin. Kyrie Irving is a part of the Kyrie Irving community, and that dude is just going to keep popping, just keep popping towns. Yeah, it it made no um, sense that seems, that when it, he asked for that trade too, because if people remember when he asked for that trade, that's when he and the Nets before KD came back, they were on a stride. And part of the thing with Dallas, too, is, I mean, let's just talk X's and O's here. So, Kyrie Irving, basketball wizard, like we've never seen, yo-yo the ball mm-hmm. all over the place, all kinds of great things. Um, Martin, this team, though, is so bad defensively. Um, they couldn't stop, uh, I mean, they could not stop, like, a water leak. They could not stop anything. I mean, they are bad, bad, bad. Um, and a lot of that is Luca too. I mean, Luca is not. I mean, they are just a black hole in the defensive end. Um, you've got a bunch of streaky shooters, and um, Tim Hardaway Jr. Um, they just that last game against Frank Milikina. Um, you got Jalen Hardy, who who you know a, a good young stud. Um, but I mean, they have nobody. Dallas for times. Um, they acquired one of the Morris twins, um, uh, Marquis from Boston in that trade. JaVale McKee is playing minutes in 2023. What are we doing here? <laughs> this team is bad. Maxi Kleber's been out and injured. Maxi Kleber can play defense and get ahead of folks, but they rested Jalen Green in that final game. This team is atrocious. They're going to need that first round pick. I don't even know what else they have to move around stuff with, but you know we might be officially be on Luca Watch. So I, I think you, I think we are. No, no, I no. think we are though because now it's like all right, you had some people like one you gutted the team that made it to the West Finals because you obviously lost Brunson and you want to get Kyrie sure, but now this is the second quote unquote star player experiment that didn't work out. Kristoff Porzingis didn't work out. Now Kyrie hasn't worked out. Now you you traded all those pieces and Kyrie's going to leave. So you gave up everything and they're going to get nothing in return. So it's like, what do you, what do you do next? This top 10 pick isn't going to be, the top 10 pick's not going to be a better player than Kyrie Irving. Like not initially, maybe down the line, a slight chance, but that's going to be hard. So it's, and also the thing that Evan and our um, lifetime watching Basketball has been a constant thing, which it's a great city and all that, but free agents do not go to Dallas. No. They just don't. You know, the Christian Wood experiment failed this year. Mm-hmm. He's going to be gone. Him. He's going to be gone. Um, there's, there's potentially some dark times ahead with, uh, with, with the Dallas Mavericks here, Martin. Um, in terms of the rest of the the rest of the West, we we'll get um, we we'll get to the play-in games here. Obviously, the Sacramento Kings. What a what a season! I mean, I I had I had them in my top ten, but no one saw this coming. I mean, it just they kind of replicated the Warriors movement, off ball movement. Um, you know, the pick and roll actions, the uh, the backdoor actions. Um, you know, they're, they're outscoring everybody. Everybody's everybody. Um, and that's with Mike Brown, a defensive mindset coach doing that too. I mean, he, uh, I don't think he got enough credit in Cleveland because of just who LeBron is in mm-hmm. terms of the offensive sets. There'd be some things come out from players that, Hey, I think Mike Brown 
really gets it from an X's and O's standpoint, um, you know, on the offensive side of the ball. But, you know, when you got LeBron, it, it's a polarizing thing on offense where, um, you know, the ball just kind of stops when it gets to him. He does great things and folks get disinterested or folks don't move off the ball as they should and stuff. And that was the, the case there. So you give him the keys to the Ferrari. Um, and you've got all these great shooters. You acquire Malik Monk. You acquire Kevin Herter. Um, Darren Fox's resurgence this year. Sabonis is an MVP candidate. Light the beam, Martin. Light the beam. I'm excited to see one of these. I'm excited to see them in this, this opening round. We've got some great matchups. And um, we'll get to it again in a second where they fall. Um, actually, this one's already set. So, you know, them playing the Warriors. It's going to be take the over. Whatever the point total is. If it's 240, take the over. These teams ain't playing defense. I would also, um, to echo that, obviously the Kings are probably the biggest story because of how high they seeded. But in the West, too, also, I mean, Oklahoma City Thunder, again, they had like a 0.1% chance to make the play in when the season started, especially when their number two check went down. But no one to be proud of. Yeah, no one foresaw. And obviously they could have obviously they didn't win against Minnesota. If they would have won that, they would have been in the playoffs. But again, they exceeded expectations exponentially. No one saw the true um ascension that happened with SGA. Like no, like the jump he had this year. I know we talked about it on the all-star thing. He should have pretend he should have been the all-star starter in the West. He's just not as popular as Steph Curry. And he, I think he should be the all NBA point guard this year, first team. Like him. How many times, how many times does that happen where you don't make the all star starter, but your first team all NBA? Yeah. That's, that's and he's going to be the other guard on their side of Donovan Mitchell. Yeah. Because him, Giddy, all the Williams that are on the OKC Thunder. All the Williams. All the Williams. Give me all the Williams. <laughs> if your last name is Williams, you were on that team. But it, it is just ridiculous. Like, SGA jumped up. He's averaged 31 points, five assists, four rebounds on 51% shooting and 90% from the free throw. Youngest guard in NBA history to average 30 points and shoot 50% from the field. Like the ascension is amazing. And they still have Chet coming back. They have all of the picks for the next like 15 the years. They if are you're in Williams, you're getting drafted. Yeah. They are in a fantastic position once again and if you look at the thunder man and if you look a couple years ago obviously they had durant harden westbrook baka all of that and they lost all of those players and you would think they'd be a bottoms dwelling team when you lose that type of talent and they're like no we're just gonna we got stuff through the trade yada yada we're gonna keep fighting through have all these picks we're gonna develop players and now you're looking at sga like man the thunder might have their fourth MVP maybe five or something years from now. So it's amazing to see. God help God help the world if the ping pong balls randomly give them the number one pick. Oh man, watch out. Because I mean they I think they don't have obviously don't have a small forward established just yet, but oh my gosh, can you imagine? Yeah. Yeah. It won't happen. It's just they have a it's the fact they have a chance and they were literally in the play in, but no, now we expect things from them, but now it's going to be great, man. But like you said, the play in did happen these past couple of days. Since we're in the West, let's just stay in the. Yeah, let's, let's talk through it. Let's stay in the West. So the Lakers, back then, we had them at the 9th seed. This is before they had all the trades. They got the Russell Westbrook problem. They got rid of that. They got some shooters. I um, Anthony Davis came back. They were able to climb. All the way to the seventh seed. And they played the Timberwolves, who were hampered because their teammates do not like each other, apparently. And Rudy Martin, go a teammate, a teammate punched another teammate. Yeah. yeah. Not just any teammate. It was Rudy Gobert, who has been he's always in the news for like the wrong reasons. Unbelievable. So he gets suspended for that game in LA. Mm-hmm. Um Still, ridiculous contract will never get off of. They gave up all their future cap leverage and flexibility and assets for this guy. Yep. And he's still what he is. I mean, the running joke I hear on pods all the time 
is who the Utah Jazz ended up acquiring in that deal that you would not, and straight up, you would not trade Rudy, you would not trade Walker Kessler, Ricky Walker Kessler, or Rudy Gobert. You would not. Mm-hmm. He blocks well. He had a great rookie season. He might, he'll, he'll probably be the first team um, center, depending on what the forward jockeying is um, with Paolo and a couple others on the all rookie team. But um, just, yeah, on, unimaginable uh, what we watched transpire in the last regular season game. Uh, so his team, without him, goes down to LA. It goes down to the wire. I thought there were some bad, really bad calls down the stretch, Martin, mm-hmm. in that game. Um, LeBron got this ridiculous loose ball call against him as if, um, uh, I forget who was, who was diving after. I think it was Torian Prince, but it said he fouled Torian Prince going after the ball. That that gave him a thing late. Um, Anthony Davis's dumb three point foul at the end. Mike Conley hits all three of those. We go to overtime. Lakers pull it out. But I mean, Martin, they were exhausted. They were exhausted. They pull it off. They get the seven seed. They're going to be going to Memphis uh, tomorrow at three o'clock. But um, you know, they they gritted it out. They they came up. LeBron had thirty. Um, you know, they put in the work. That was the first playoff like game in Staples in a long time. So obviously they had the bubble when they had their run. They had made the playoffs last year. Um, that crowd was rocking. It was int- I don't normally see that or hear that um, in, in L.A. I, I feel like a lot of times, it's, you know, the kind of apathetic get their late crowd and everything else. But um, the crypto, Staples. I said Staples earlier. It might go back to Staples. Yeah, I mean, Staples is what we... I would also yeah, say yeah, with, yeah. with the LeBron thing, too, like, it's weird because now it's two out of the past three years they've been in the bubble. They had the one year where they beat the Warriors in the bubble, and that's when Steph said this famous, you don't want to see us next year, and they won the title. But they've had two bubbles, a couple not make the in playoffs and the, in the play, and then obviously the championship. So it's like, and I also would say with the Timberwolves, too, I don't know if Rudy would have made that big of a difference, but I do know if Anthony Edwards would have actually played his normal self, that would have been a difference because he was three not seventeen, off three horrendous. seventeen in that game, zero for nine from three. Kyle Anderson had the game of his life. I mean, he dished out thirteen huge assists in that game. Yeah, um, was phenomenal. Mike Conley, um, you know, really doesn't put in it scoring wise. Picked it up. I thought Torian Prince has done really well in recent games um, on the defensive side of the ball. And still contributing. I loved him when he he played for the Cavs. Um, that that brief uh, uh, stint there. But um, so they so Martin Lakers advanced. They claim the seventh seed. They will play the Grizzlies starting tomorrow Sunday. As you're hearing this, listeners. Yep. Um. So and then in our other game, so we had um, the Thunder defeat the Pelicans. Um. And Shea Shea and Giddy both had thirty plus. Um. Giddy flirting with the triple double, thirty one nine and ten. Um, Shea was on it. Lou Dort, 27 points. I think he had 13 in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, they just they just torched the Pelicans that made a game, you know, later down the stretch. Brandon Ingram with 30. Um, and same old, same old with, um, you know, is it the Rudy Gobert contract or is it um, the Zion Williamson contract? Is it the two worst contracts in basketball? You Famously, you've got the dude, you know, windmill dunking, you know, uh, while he's been out, you know, uh, few months back and uh but he's not good enough to play and hey, we're kind of getting in like this weird ben simmons thing where it's like well my doctors tell me you know if you don't feel 300 percent, you're not going to play he didn't play um they also uh they also didn't have larry nance due to injury um they uh they dropped one, 123 118 and, and the pelicans bow out i would also say on the Pelicans front too. You had like CJ McCollum. He had a w- long winded thing, but basically age old addict. The best ability is availability, and like people should be able to play. Mm-hmm. Obviously, if we know who that was directed, we know who that was directed to. Zion has not played a game since January second. It is April, and obviously you don't know like people's bodies and all that stuff. But it was a hamstring. This is almost the same situation, Evan. Where as Buckeye fans like we heard Jackson Smith and Jigba's thing was a hamstring. And then when he pulled it, he didn't play the rest of the year. So obviously it had, it's either there is something more that they just don't want to tell us 
which is fine. Or like you said, it's the Ben Simmons thing. It was like, is it your doctor? Is it the mental? Like what's going on? Because he's going to ask for a lot more money, which if I'm in the front office, I have to really sit and think like, do I want to give this man? He just got the max. I think there's some strengths to it, but I mean, he just got the max off season. Yeah. David Griffin made the, made the round saying, listen, like, you know, we're committed to him. We're going to, we're going to make this, we're going to make an investment in him. Um, Cause when he plays, he's a, he's and that's true. When he plays, he's a monster. Mm-hmm. Like I, I heard on the, um, I think it was on uh, the mismatch the other day. Um, shout out Kevin O'Connor and um, uh, his team over there. But um, so they were talking like, listen, you and I, we live in Columbus, Ohio. You and I roll up to a park in Gahanna. We can pick any NBA player we want. Martin, assume they're all healthy. Assume they're all ready to rock and roll. Martin, do either of us make 15 picks and we not pick Kyle Williamson? Oh, not in not that setting in the park, dude. No, no, no. <laughs> that dude, that dude. It's gonna be like it's gonna be like the scene in the longest yard where Michael Urban like elbows dudes in the face and goes, "I hit you, I hit you." It's gonna be that. Mm-hmm. And you need a guy like that because he is such a physical force, man. You can't you can't stop that guy. No, it's I don't know, man. It's, but that's it's a weird spot. He's not playing basketball. Yeah. It's a weird spot because if he played, there was actually a point this year when they were playing that our prediction was right about them. They were at the upper of the Western Conference, and then he stopped, and then they went on slid. Brandon Ingram still good. CJ McCullough, Val- Valanciunas, aka Travis Kelsey's twin brother. Like they have a good team. It just needs Zion to play. And if he's not, I'm sorry. If we come into October and they say he's still not healed, it, it, things have to happen. And they still have, remember, they still have the Lakers picks. They still have yeah. um, uh, Milwaukee picks from the Drew trade. They've got assets to do something this summer, right? They're not they're not handcuffed necessarily. I mean, they could go in luxury tax like crazy, but um, I still think there's some weird fits on this team. Um, you know, I, I, I hope for them, Jones Valanciunas isn't a casualty. And that guy could not be stopped. Um, the other night against OKC, OKC had nobody to defend him, yeah. and they did not let him shoot the ball in the third quarter. Um, and I mean, he just he just was a monster underneath. I mean, he's always I feel like a walking fourteen and fourteen. Um, but uh, they've got they've got some assets to do stuff. Um, Martin, so the next playing game, OKC goes on. We alluded to it already a little bit. I was a little surprised to wake up and see the score. I didn't stay up. Last night, but the T Wolves clinched the the eight spot. They knocked them off. I think one twenty to uh, ninety five was it. So I mean, a sizable, uh, yeah, sizable um, deficit last night. Timberwolves really kept uh, Shea and um, Giddy in check. Uh, Giddy was two of thirteen from the field. Shea was uh, five of nineteen, twelve for twelve from the line. So most of his points there. He, I mean, he, no three pointers. Um, you know, on the T Wolf side, Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy both had 20 plus. Um, Edwards quasi bounce back game, eight of 19 from the floor for 19 points. Um, and they advance their eight seed, they will take on the Denver Nuggets. Um, Martin, any thoughts on that, or you just want to go straight into what the, the Nuggets series and say West will pick up? We'll kind of um, run first round. We could say in the West, but I just think with the Timberwolves and the uh, Thunder matchup. It was just a size thing. Like this was a time where the Twin Towers worked with Carl Anthony Towns, who had himself a game. Rudy Gobert had himself a game as well. So it's just one of those things. If the Thunder can get some more front court presence, I, I think that game goes differently. But that's all there is to back it. Shortly, yeah, that's all there is to it. But let's stay in the West, man. Let's uh, do our first rounds in the West. Start. Let's do the one eight matchup. Who you got? How many games it's going? Any commentary on things you're looking for in the series? How you think things are going to go? All right. Uh, so that is the Denver Nuggets versus the Minnesota Timberwolves, like we've already stated. Uh, the pressure is on Denver because this is the first time in a while that all the horses are healthy. I uh, got two time MVP, the Joker, Jamal Murray. I mean, all of the guys, and they're they got to do it, man. 
They are fully healthy. We've seen what this team is capable of all year. They got to do it. I think Denver wins this series in five. Okay. Um, Martin, um, I've been watching from afar. Mm-hmm. I something's going on with the Denver Nuggets. Okay. Um, I think they'll make. I think they'll make it past the series. I'm going to take Denver in six. Okay. Um, but they, I feel like they were kind of clutching on to the number one seed towards the end, just based on the coattails of their successes in the first the first half of the season. Really, March, yeah. since March third, the Denver Nuggets are nine and ten. Um, you know, I, I, I think I've seen, I, I'm not sure what's up. So I, I full expect we'll get to it later. I full expect Jokic to not win the MVP this year, even though he's had some absurd offensive numbers, his defense has regressed so bad. I think back to that, you know, big, um, heavyweight bout between them and Joel Embiid and Philly, um, before, Joel did the cowardly. Oh man! Oh, I, I that was I on play. Martin yeah. Luther King Day, I believe. Yeah, that I mean, I, he was a traffic cone. It was so bad, and it, I I see this over and over and over again. You know, they pick up Reggie Jackson, um, you know, to off their bench. They get they move on to Bell Thailand, who um, also hit it hit, uh, was getting face to face with a teammate with some shoving stuff um, on the Clippers bench. Um, you know, but you're right. They got all the horses. I'm going to say, you know, Denver with some of these struggles and maybe the T-Wolves are a little bit frisky. It's a six game series. Um, but I've got Denver advancing. Martin, what about, um, our two seven Los Angeles and Memphis? You know, it's kind of interesting for people who listen to the, uh, wrestling side of the L7C as the stadium goes, you can't book this any better. Obviously, you had the situation with L.A. with Shannon Sharp and T. Morant and all of that and Jaw stuff. Now you have them playing each other in the series. You can't book it any better than that. Obviously, Evan, you were you were one of the first people who were really high on Memphis last year because you went to one of the games and all of that. They're back in the playoffs. Dylan Brooks is talking a lot. I, I feel like this one's going to go seven. I feel like it's going to go seven, and it's like how much Stephen Adams is gone. I think with Stephen Adams being gone, it's the biggest thing for me. I think the Lakers win this at seven. Martin, I'm shocked. I seriously am. The Steven um, Adams thing's big for me, man. I know they got Jared Jackson. Is, no, probably... no, no, no. It absolutely, it absolutely is. And I, I think this is, I mean, this is a minimum six or seven game series, I think, because of that. So, I mean, he just, he does so much. Um, that's a guy to contest with, um, a guy to contest with Anthony Davis in the post and, you know, LeBron in the post and stuff too. A guy who sets the hardest screens in basketball um, to free up your guards to let it fly from deep. Um, you know, give the shooter space, off ball uh, stuff to free up guys on second and third um, actions into a play. He, it was so tough. I will say, Martin, he was warming up on the court um, on their like last game for a guy who allegedly is being shut down for the season. Why are you on the court warming up? Mm-hmm. I think there's a start, a steep possibility. We 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 might. Dare I say we might see him? It might be too soon to say we might see him in the last three games of the series, but we, if they go on, I don't think he's completely written off like originally reporting. Some, something seems he's been out a long time, but I I could see something moving there. I'll say I'm taking the Grizz in this series. Um, I like them in six or seven. I'm going to, if you're putting me down for something, I'm going to say six. Um, I think. What you might see is I think you might see the Lakers take one of the first two games, but we've seen when the when the defense slows down, um, I don't trust Darvin Ham's play calling or, or rotations, I should say. I don't trust Darvin Ham's rotations. I think he does what a lot of early coaches do um, early on in their career when they're calling the shots, 
And I think you, when you see runs on the other team, you panic and you overload your stars and you throw them back in. You don't ride stuff out. You don't study the minutes across the board. You don't let one star in with four guys and you swap them out. So there's always a star on the court that I, I see this as, I think Memphis has more depth, has younger guys. Um, the key factor in the series for me is, first off, um, I am not, Jerry Jackson is a heck of a defensive player. Um, everybody just looks at, well, look at the block stats, rah, 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 rah. Um, obviously, I'm biased with who I think should be defensive player of the year. Um, but he's played, um, we're talking like some absurd amount of minutes less than everybody else. And nobody wants to talk about it. They said, well, look how many blocks he has in this game. What's key for this series, Martin, when you talk about everything that Jaron Jackson is, is Jaron Jackson is great. Jaron Jackson is aggressive. He, he pads the, the block seat, sheet like nobody will see. But Martin, tell me what happens when you, when you go for blocks as often as you do. Um, sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't. But what's mm-hmm. the other side of the coin nobody's willing to talk about on the national level? What happens when you don't get those blocks and it's a, and it's a hand and it's, and it's a wrist you're touching. And it's oh, I mean, you get in foul trouble, then you, you come out the game. Jaron Jackson is a walking foul liability. <laughs> He's routinely four fouls, five fouls, fouls out all the time. And that's why he hasn't played as many minutes as Evan Mobley, as Drew Holiday, as Brooke Lopez, as all these guys is, wow, man, look at the block sheet. But did you have five, did you have six fouls and didn't finish the game? And you hurt your team down the stretch when they could have used you because you're too aggressive. He he's he's just got to figure that out, man. He's too good of a talent to be off the floor. And if that happens, we might well be in a conversation where the Lakers the Lakers are winning the series. Um, and and that's a real possibility too, especially when you're going up against the likes of Anthony Davis, um, battling him in the post, you know, every other night. So, but for now, I'm taking the Grizz. Um, you got to watch that foul thing with Jaron Jackson. We'll see. Um, and then Martin, let's go to, again, back to that fun series, Kings and Warriors. We got. All right. So you said something earlier about them about being like the Warriors movement and all of that. And again, you can't book this any better. You could potentially have a changing of the guard. Potentially. I know we like to use that a lot in the media and all that. The Kings, this could be their, we're officially here for the next couple of years, as long as we have our pieces. And the Warriors, this is more than likely, I, I hate using the term now because we've, because we've been spoiled, the last dance with them because they're not going to pay Draymond all of that money. I think he's going to be out. Nope. So this is the last with the presently constructed core that they drafted of Clay, Dre, and Steph. The Warriors are the... Six seed Kings are the three seed. That game is going to be absolutely absurd. Game one. I I don't want to pick against the defending champs because playoffs are better than the playoffs are different than the regular season. They've been here so many times. The Kings, this is their first time back here before my youngest brother was shoot, maybe even in diapers. But I'm going off the regular season. I got the Kings at seven because the Warriors can't win on the road. Unless you win road playoff games, you can't win a playoff series. And with the Warriors, they're in a case where they have to at least win one road playoff game. I don't know if they can do it, man, because if you you watch them this year on the road, they were terrible. Like, bad. bad. We've never seen this. So I know the Kings are the underdogs. From the money line Vegas perspective, for people out there who bet, but I, I got the Kings until I I'm like, until I see something otherwise. I could obviously be wrong, and the Warriors like, aha, we've been tricking you guys. We're gonna sweep them, but I got the Kings, man, just because of home court advantage. Martin, this is this is such a tough one for me, but this is one of the most exciting series um, for me to watch. I still obviously would love to root against <laughs> all things Golden State. Is this is this Sort of a last dance thing, um, what have you, that's yet to see. But I think this goes to seven. I'm going to give the edge to the defending champs until that group healthy together can prove to me that somebody can beat them. Or can prove to me that, until the last reason prove to me somebody can beat them. Uh, defending champs 
They've walked the walk. They've been there before. Their hands are absolutely full. Um, I don't think this is a good team defensively. I think, you know, you're going to see all the regular stuff. I think Davion Mitchell, I think, is going to be huge coming in off the bench to defend stuff and chase him around a bunch, physical defender. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I think across the, the stat sheet here, I don't think they, I don't think Hoke has an answer for Sabonis. Um, obviously, the Kings don't have an answer for it. Clay has been. Clay has been great. This is the best basketball Clay Thompson has played, in my opinion, in the last two and a half seasons. Um, he is he is in that rare Clay Thompson form now. Um, they get Andrew Wiggins back from that long family matter. He was away from the team about, um, but um, so he is not. But he is not. He's he probably has been you know working out. He's probably been getting shots in through that time. But he has not been playing with the Golden State Warriors. So, you know, they've got probably got some things to figure out. You'll probably see early on in the series some, oh, I thought Wiggins was going to be over here and end up passing it to see her on the bench, turnovers. Like, I, I think there's enough here for it to go seven, but I'm going to give the slight, slightest of edges to the defending champs for now um, until somebody else can prove that differently. Fair enough. Um, Martin, let's move on to the next series. All right, you got the four or five matchup. You got the Phoenix Suns versus the Clippers. Again, <laughs> you can't book Mike something Clippers. better. Strange Mike twist Clippers. of fate. <laughs> Strange twist of fate. You got Durant versus Russell Westbrook in the playoffs. I don't know how this league does stuff like this, but here we are. You have it. What's the what's the prognosis on on Paul George again? Is I he don't out believe out for the series. Yeah, I don't think they they haven't updated anything on him. I think he's going to be out this series, and I think that's the difference. I think if he plays, the Clippers have a legit shot to win this series with Kawhi, Paul, Westbrook. Who Westbrook, he needed to get out of L.A., well, out of the Lakers. He's played a lot better since being on the Clippers, but I have the Suns winning this one in six. Most. I have that exact same Martin. I have the exact same Martin. Um, I don't think George is going to play in the first couple games of the series. I think we will see him by later on. Um, looks like he's getting some shots up in practice and stuff lately. Just want a quick look on Twitter, but um, you know, for for the Clippers, it, again on paper, this is supposed to be. They were supposed to have done something by now with Kawhi and. I mean, it, it's just so tough. This, this, they are the definition of load management. You know, I know George plays when he try or tries to play way more than Kawhi tries to play, but it's put up or shut up time. And you know, you were looking across at Kevin Durant and Devin Booker, and you've got Chris Paul just feeding them. And um, you know, I know I'm trying to think of down there and run through too. Obviously. Um, DeAndre Ayton missed some time at the end of the um, regular season. I think he's in good shape coming back, but um, I mean that's a huge force to deal with too. So, um, I yeah, I'm taking the Suns as well. Fair enough. So no sweeps. We have no sweeps in the West. Pretty competitive series. I think the least I said I think I had one in five, and that was the one eight, and you had then six, but we had six. Six six, uh, sevens, some six, like some competitive series out west. So I, I dig it. I dig it. Can't wait to see these games go out. E- going out east, Evan. We had the play in games over there. You had Atlanta um, beating Miami, which I don't know if you've seen the Atlanta stats. They're literally the definition of mediocre, where they <laughs> were five hundred. Like they had a stretch where it was like win one, lose one, win one, lose one, win one, like like 30 games. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can never understand this team, man, because then they'll just randomly again make a run and be in the Eastern Conference Finals. I mean, when you got a person like Trey Young who can shoot and dish the ball like he does, I'm not the biggest like Trey Young fan, but I understand what he brings to the table. But you have them advancing, and then you also had Chicago beating Toronto with the real MVP, uh, DeMar DeRozan's young daughter, <laughs> yelling at the free throws. And you're professional basketball players. You can't effective. shoot that percentage. And I don't care who's yelling. That, that was abysmal. 
And Chicago goes down to Miami, mm-hmm. and then Miami secure the eight seed. They dropped them last night. Huge Max Truss game, just lighting it up from three. Um, Kevin Love played a little bit more this time. They continue to watch that enigma who didn't want to be a part of the Cavs anymore um, without guaranteed minutes, uh, essentially. But anyway, so Mary, let's let's start there. Your one and eight matchup, Heat, Bucks. Martin, I've got, we saw this, was it last year, two years ago? This We've seen this a couple. Think, We've seen this actually a couple of times. They've actually okay. become playoff rivals. Uh, this is this is my first one. Never say never with the will of Jimmy Butler. Yes. And if you have a Max Struess night like you did last night, they can take a game. But I'm going to be aggressive here and say get out the brooms. This Milwaukee team is stacked. They are deeper than they've ever been. Giannis is a top three MVP candidate. We've got you, they've got a Joe Angle, they've got a Jay Crowder. Um, they've taken a flyer on um, uh, um, what's his name, uh, Miles. What's his name, the center? Oh, I'm um, driving it's all in the blanks. Um, <laughs> so they've added some extra. I'll get it here in a second, but they've added some extra depth. Um, you know, Drew is arguably one of the best defensive guards in the league, Martin. Um, my, or Myers Leonard, sorry, thank you. Um, Myers Leonard is picked up as well, too. But this team's got so much depth to it. They still got to figure out and work through this Chris Middleton thing where he's still shaky. He looks like he's put on a little bit extra weight. And stuff. I think he's definitely had better games more recently than he had um, you know, when he first started to come back and they're working in off the bench. Um, again, never say never, but I just, I just don't think – I think – for Miami, they really struggle to score at times. You're playing the best, arguably one of the best defensive teams in the league. Not just the first level of the season five years. Um, but uh, I, I, I'm taking a sweep. Okay, okay. I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. It's just with the will of Jimmy and what I've seen, I think he could get you one game. So I'm just going to – and I think that'd be game four – in Miami when they're down 3-0, and then it'd be it. So I give it to the Bucks and Bucks in five. Two seven. So back to the Atlanta Hawks. Well, Christy, Atlanta Hawks at time. Um, and the Boston Celtics. Um, you're right. I think it's so hard to predict with Atlanta. I definitely like the sets and stuff they're running with with Quinn Snyder. Um, now as their coach, uh, Trey has arguably ran off in another one. Um, but, you know, I, I think some of the growth we've seen, adding Sadiq Bay um, for the Hawks side of things, um, obviously they've got uh, Bogdanovich. Um, they, have, they went all in and acquired um, uh, they went all in and acquired uh, Murray um, this offseason. Um, that you know, I think they're I think they're a crispy enough team to for sure take a game. Can they take that second one though? I'm going to say they potentially can. Boston's had a long layover here. There's there's obviously they're winning the series, but um, whether it's five games, whether it's six, Boston wins in. I've got Boston. Um, I'm going to give the Celtics a little bit more credit and say they take this in five. Um, not to take a game. They might end up take, taking two though. But Martin, what are your thoughts? Boston's interesting. They were obviously a top team for most of the year. Jason was an early MVP candidate. Uh, obviously, with the stuff with Edoka, who you and I have talked, we talked about on pause before, our viewpoints and all of that, for them to bounce back from that and still be a top two seed. This is obviously the Eastern Conference champions from last year. It's just, I got Boston in six games. Against Atlanta, I think they're going. I think Atlanta's going to get two games, and and then Boston will just close it out. But I got them in six. Martin, four hours from now, the first NBA playoff game tips off between the uh, wing heavy now Brooklyn Nets without Benjamin Simmons. <laughs> just had to say that for you. Um, and the Philadelphia 76ers in the three six matchup. Um, on this front, I definitely think this is the best basketball James Harden and Joel Embiid have played together. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I think Joel Embiid is obviously impossible to guard. It is a I think 
think you get out the batons. I think the Ohio State University marching band drum major should be here. Because it's going to be, like it always is in the Philadelphia 76 er game, it's going to be long. There's going to be literally somebody um, walking the parade to the free throw line because mm-hmm. they are they are drifting foul hunters like I've never seen before. And it's frustrating. Um, but it's just reality that that's how they're officiated somehow. And everything is a yell at the ref. You're Joel and Harden and these guys. Um, the Sixers are winning the series. Um, I don't think I don't think it's a sweep. I'm going to say it's in five, maybe six. But you know, there's just so Bridges has been so good, Martin, for for Brooklyn. Um, mm-hmm. The wings they can continue to throw and throw. Um, you know, I love the I love the um, uh, the depth they have. Still got Seth Curry shooting an absurd amount. Um, I think at one point this year. Percentage-wise, he was shooting better than Seth um, in the 40s. So um, I like the Sixers uh, in five in this one. Um, and then, obviously, the real fun in the Easter Conference gets set in the second round here. But what about you? Um, man, this is I, – I think the Sixers are going to advance. I'm trying to decide on the game because, like, Mikel Bridges, like, he doesn't miss games. And this and next Claxton's no pushover in the post against Embiid either. No, and the fact that this team lost Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving in the same year, and I guess you could quote unquote say they lost Ben Simmons, but whatever. And they lost all those three people in the same year. And Vaughn has gotten this team to the playoffs with Mikael Bridges, um, Nick Claxton. And- do we have games where Cam goes absolutely nuts and drops a random 40 ball? It's like he was um he was a DN a DNP um a, a couple times at the end of the stretch, which was a head scratcher, but I mean he's certainly capable. He showed us he probably had three games in a row or in the year where he did. Um it's possible. Uh, I I think their best case scenario is they take two games. I, I just don't yes. see them yeah, it won't um, go past winning the series or winning a third. Yeah, no, I don't I see them going. going to that. I got max, max six, but minimum, uh, I think it, max would go six, but I could see beating five with the Sixers. Martin, let's get to the best matchup. And I'm not being sarcastic either. Obviously, we're biased. We know this is the best matchup. Mm-hmm. Six tonight at six. Um, and uh, people around the league are talking about this. Is, which is before the before you go, Evan, I do you want to say we did call it Cavs fifty plus witnesses here minimum, and we got it. We did. We got it. Uh, there there were some games. Obviously, they could have. I, I think there's some games down the stretch. Just just enigmas that they they should have won. Um, what a season! Cavs first time making. Or Cavs first time making the playoffs um, without a LeBron James on their team since 1998. Their first time winning 50 wins without a LeBron James on their team since 1993. Um, it might have been 93, 94. Um, Martin, what a season. They are number two in net, net um, efficiency. They are number one defensively. The anchors are doing what they're supposed to be doing. They've weathered the storm around injuries. Um, Donovan Mitchell had a, a grown thing he was battling. People stop poking Darius Garland in the eye for the love of everything. Hey, they got more man space alone, probably five or six times this year. They weathered that off the season with Gary Trent Jr. in the first game, um, putting him down for seven eight with his just nasty eye contusion, trying to go for a ball and an inbound and just scrape the ever living you know what out of his eye. But um, that being said, the, so the Knicks after a really bad year last year have, have resurged. Um, you know, a lot of people are going to talk about, hey, they could have had, they could have traded for Donovan Mitchell too, and they didn't want to give up R.J. Barrett. Yada yada yada. And obviously, you know, Donovan's from the area. His dad's involved in the next organization. Um, he thought he was going there until he didn't. Um, he's obviously a happy camper now. Um, Donovan Mitchell is that dude. So if we talk about the X's and O's of the series, um, 15 hours ago per Twitter on Wages, Wages thing, um, 
obviously it was a lot of discussion about where's Julius Randle at. I expect Julius Randle to play in game one tonight, Martin. I didn't think I, that was the case uh, yesterday when I woke up. But apparently he's, they've been ramping up some of his shooting stuff. So he's going to be a problem. Um, for the Cavs side of things, injury-wise, Isaac Okoro did not play in their most recent game where you each had, you each had Brunson and Mitchell going for 35-plus the next one that game. Um, Isaac Okoro is a difference maker on the defensive side of the ball. He um, he is a he's in that um, uh, that Lou Dort realm. Um, he's he's in that um, you know maybe sixty five seventy percent of a Marcus Smart realm. Uh, not to not to belittle anything. I mean he's still got much to go to Marcus Smart, but he's been banged up. Um, you need a guy like that just pounding pounding him all game, Jalen Brunson, for the Cavs. So both teams got some injuries to some key starters. Jared Allen didn't play in that last game either, so you get him back. Um, uh, so obviously you get some, got some more depth in the post. Obviously I'm taking the Cavs in the series. Um, you know, the Cavs, this is the first time they're coming in their own as a young team. Um, you know, I think JD still has some quirky um, rotations at times. There's times where, you know, I feel like he doesn't play Jenny Osmond enough. Um, and I get why sometimes on the defensive end, but that guy is a shot maker more times than he is, more times he is than he's not. Um, I think I like this going six. It's 4-2. Um, Evan Mobley has been a monster. Um, when Jared Allen was out, he picked up a load um, uh, offensively, a lot of, a lot of 20 and 10 games, a lot of flirting with 20 and 10 games. We know what he brings to the uh, floor defensively. He gets out there to the three-point line. He can pass um, on shooters. He is a, a problem problem. They're going to need him against Julius Randle, tapping um, the basket, um, you know, keeping uh, keeping that team off the glass. Um, you know, the Knicks are, the Knicks are frisky um, in every sense of the word, but I definitely expect him to take a couple games here. And this could go 7-2, Martin, but I've got, I've got the Cavs come out on the other side of it. Uh, yeah. Like you already said, this matchup four five Cleveland fifty one thirty one New York forty seven thirty five. I've watched obviously I watched a lot of Cavs games this year, and I've watched a good amount of New York games with Randall's explosions, uh, Brunson's explosions. A player who has truly emerged, who is a candidate who may win six man of the year, who concerns me from a Cavs perspective. Emmanuel quickly because what is he going to do against Cleveland? But I, with the combination of Mitchell Garland, and if everyone does their jobs, Josh see, Hart will be huge. Yeah, two Josh two. Hart as well. It's just I really do like Emmanuel quickly. I I got the Cavs in seven. I think this one goes seven. I really think this could be a. Cavs can win the first two at home, Knicks win the next two, then it's back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I can see him going back and forth the whole series, but this was going to be the most entertaining one from a matchup perspective because these teams are very evenly matched. And I think the Cavs win in seven games. And as an Ohioan, that'd be great. But objectively, I wouldn't be surprised if New York won, do I want them to win? No, but I would not be surprised. That's how good this series should be. And that's why home court, you're exactly right. That's why home court matters. Um, Cavs are 31 and 10. Yeah. Uh, and Rock and Mortgage this season. Um, you know, obviously in the, the last one they dropped and didn't play a whole lot. So obviously, I mean, but just resting starters once Stefford has secured the at that point. You might have another win. So they there too. But, um, which would tie them for the most um, with Milwaukee and Boston taking care of them for. Um, they're 20 and 21 on the road. Um, uh, the, Knicks are, the Knicks are fairly consistent. I mean, they're 23 and 18 at home, 24 and 17 on the road. Um, yeah, we're going to have some great Donovan Mitchell games. We're going to have some great Jalen Brunson games in the series. I, I really think, you know, if we look at six, there's kind of the middle spot potential on where the series could go one way or another. Um, Depend on are we looking at six? We're saying at six. Is there a conversation for something absurd about five? Is there? I don't think so. But is there? Some matter going seven. Who's winning? I I think Julius Randle and how healthy.
think he is is yes. going to be the, the huge part of the series. That is everything. I mean, the Cavs do not have a six eight to six ten wing defender that can move with him. Um, you know, Mobley is such a utility knight that he can adapt and guard whoever, whenever, out in the perimeter in the post. You name it. Um, with Jared Allen, the security blanket out back. Isaiah Hartenstein, I think, is going to play a lot in the series for the Knicks. Um, from a distribution side of things, he's phenomenal. Um, directing directing traffic in the high post. You're going to have a quickly game at home for sure. Um, but it's going to be a good series, Martin. I'm excited. Starts at 6 tonight is going uh, to be recorded on Saturday, the 15th. It's going to be great, man. These NBA playoffs are going to be very interesting. I think that all these games, I don't think there's going to be any real, like, I don't think there's going to be a sweep in any series, which is good because these things are going to be competitive, maybe some five games. I see a lot of sixes, a couple sevens, but it's going to be really good. It's I cannot wait. Starts today, 1 p.m., uh, first game of the playoffs. You got the Nets and the Sixers at 1 p.m., then 3.30, you got Boston, Atlanta, game one, like you already said, Cavs, Knicks at six, and then 8.30 p.m., their first game on ABC in almost two decades, the Kings and the Warriors. To wrap this pod up, Evan, Friday, they announced the award finalists. I know they've been doing this for a couple of years where they just announce the three and they do their, like their post game, like their postseason show or whatever. But three ones really I'm going to talk about really quickly. Uh, we had MVP, you had Jokic, Giannis, and Embiid being those three that are the final three for MVP. I think we're both thinking that it's going to be Embiid's time this year. But obviously with um, with Joker's monster numbers on Kind of feel like Giannis was slighted. At the beginning of the year, we said, don't be surprised if he wins MVP. I think I picked him to win MVP, which if you look at his team and what he's done, I don't – we used to go best record, best player on the best team. That's what we were doing, and he's the best player on the best team, and he has a number, so I'm like, why is he – he's going to be a distant third, which I think is going to be atrocious. The these award voters have a tendency again to who's a new guy I can attend with yeah. that vote. Uh, they, they get they have like voter fatigue for whatever reason. And I, I think Giannis will be slotted a little bit of this. I think how Jokic's season has ended, honestly, mm-hmm. I'd have Giannis as number two. I, I, I would really too. Would. I really would. But I think this is finally the year Joel gets over the hump. He is your 22-23 NBA most valuable player. Um, he's doing stuff that, I mean, it just reminds you a lot of Shaq. I mean, he's been doing that for years, but this year, best of luck, he's taking it on. I, again, I just, the only asterisk is just, again, just trying to not play that stuff for when he can sure, for sure wrap this thing up. And just, I mean, because he would have feasted, because Jokic, Jokic is just so bad defensively for whatever reason right now. Um, yeah, I just don't know. Martin, let's move on to so much player finalists. A new award this year. New award. We have Jimmy Butler. We have DeMar DeRozan. We have De'Aaron Fox. Um, I think it's I think it's Fox here. There's just been so many late Agreed. Kings games, and it, and part of that's going to hurt is you know there's so many voters that are East Coast folks who don't stay up and watch the Century West Coast tips and stuff. So like we might get a little crazy here on some things. Um, you know, I definitely think Jimmy and Tamar are great. Like we know they're you can go to them ISO and the wings and their money on on mid range pull ups and stuff and those kinds of things. But you know, I I think Darren just so has his shoulders involved that he's gonna be the inaugural winner of this. I agree. I have nothing nothing to add. I think Darren takes it. Rookie of the year, our That's three easy. finalists, um, <laughs> Walker Kessler. J. Lynn, J. A. L. E. N. Williams, um, who's really come on late, um, Powell and Paolo Bencaro. Um, Martin Paolo came out hot. Um, first, let's say, first 20 games of the season, 30 games of the season, and then he struggled a little bit in there, and Jalen Williams emerged later on, really had a solid run, averaging 14 points a game, um, just really great and part of the OKC's run there. Um, did 
Did Jalen do enough to unseat Paolo? I don't think so. But I don't. I, I, I don't think, think so. Make things a question and down the stretch more than we would have with a runaway winner. Yeah, I don't think so either. If I do remember, I don't know if it was recent. I just want to make sure. I thought I saw something where like he's someone else is voting. I don't know if his voting got leaked or I don't know. I thought I saw something, but you know, Twitter. But I think Pablo is just going to win it. I just, I think the other two came on too late and he was, was already ahead. I think Pablo wins it pretty handily. Um, defensive player, Martin. <laughs> um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. My vote's going to Evan Mobley, who, I mean, he's getting some big eyes now. Ryan Russell and Bill Simmons both said he's getting his vote. He stayed over a thousand more minutes. I don't know the exact number. I think it's like 1,600 or 1,800 more than Jaron Jackson. He stays on the court. He doesn't just, he doesn't block hunt. He does all elements of the game. Um, no. Martin, you uh, have, you're defending the final possession of game seven of the NBA final. You have three options ahead of you. Brooke Lopez, Evan Mobley, Jaron Jackson. There's so many different potentials here. You have uh, on the defensive side of the ball. You could be put in a pick and roll and you're defending a guard. You could be, um, you could have the opposing team's best wing or post player attacking the bucket. You could have them getting it on the block. Um, you need somebody prepared for all those different settings. Um, you need length, which all three of these folks have. Uh, you need quick feet. You need, um, you need to be able to contest. Um, and, and contest without fouling. Obviously, I've teed it up here for one guy. Tell me the answer is not Evan Mobley, the guy you want defending that. I mean, I, I I do. I think with this one, I have two things. Who I would like to win and who I think the voters are going to go for. Obviously, I would like Evan Mobley to win, but I think the voters are going to go Jaron Jackson Jr. And I'm also basing it off of last year when we were with Evan last year that – um. Mobley should have, it should have been clear cut. He should have been rookie of the year. And he was not. And he lost to Scotty Barnes, which we've seen how that's turned out. But I'm still kind of miffed about that, that they went that way. So I think they're just going to go Jaron Jackson because of the stats. And also with Brooke Lopez, too. He's had a great, he's had a great year. But I just feel like who I want to win, Mobley. Who I think the voters are going to vote for because of statistics, Jackson. I think so. Yeah, I think so too. Um, they, I, unfortunately, um, but you know, this is sometimes you see that. Oh, like in this debate of the year you don't win, is the name your is the year your name gets presented for next year. Yeah, I agree. And then you had you most of improved. Second. Most of the finish seconds go first. So. That, that's true. That's true. So most improved: Jalen Brunson, Shea Gilgis Alexander, Lowry Markman. Martin, in my eyes. Two are well-established stars who made very impactful marginal increases in their points per game. Mm -hmm. But one came out of nowhere and was a starter in the All-Star game. Former class Cleveland Cavalier, Lowry Mark. No. That two, I think, should deserve this award. I like that. You guys have given the most improved to establish, establish scoring buckets, stars, what have you. And the jump Lowry made to be a starter in the Western Conference. Um, Alongside LeBron, um, there's so, I mean, there's always so many different wing options that that was the guy. That's a that's a good one. Utah like, wasn't supposed to do what they did this year. Yeah, they also shout out to Utah. They also fell off a cliff. They were they they lost games down the stretch. They needed, they needed to, to win. Them. I mean, they 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 needed to desperately though. The draft status. Ah oh, man. I'm not gonna lie. Before you said the stop giving it to, it made me think of the John Moran thing because I I was just full heartedly just gonna go SGA because obviously he's he was established, but now we're he is a top ten player in the association, which he was not last year in my that is improvement. But you're like you said it correctly, especially at the beginning middle of the year, what marketing was doing was absurd. So. You swayed me. You swayed me on that statement with the stop giving to established people because yeah. he wasn't established. So 
I, I am going to go marketing with you. you. You swayed me on that. I still love SGA, but I'm going marketing. That was good. That was a really good line that made me have to stop and think. Now, was, is that going to happen or not? And Shane's not going to get it. Who knows? But because um, Shane may well end up getting this too. But it is what it is. Um, Martin, so let's go to six man. We have. I think Matt this is the Brogdon. toughest one. Malcolm Brogdon. Um, Bobby Portis, let me do something on Bobby Portis and, and Emmanuel Quickly. I fully expect that Emmanuel Quickly is going to get this award. Mm-hmm. Just, um, you know, just that heat check guy coming in and just really had some games. I don't know why Sid does not play him until, you know, the last 2025 20, games where I think he secured it, but um, it, it, giving him minutes for those kinds of things. But Bobby Portis has been so huge. When you, when Giannis gets those rest games, um, when you know Brooke, Brooke Lopez is out for a little bit, this guy competes. He competes hard. He is. I and mean, he gets those offensive rebounds and putbacks. He can. He can knock down the three. Um, he has been huge for Milwaukee, the, the number one team, the best record in the league. Um, he gets. He gets his flowers. Um, Brogdon, obviously, is going to be named amongst these three. You got to put in the work and, and do good things, and he's been great running the second unit with. With the Celtics, but I got Clifton. You know what? I'm going Bobby Portis. He deserves it. Do I think he's going to win? No. <laughs> I'm going Bobby. I, I actually do. I've liked Bobby since, especially that run that uh, the Bucks had in the uh, playoffs when they won the championship. And I feel like he's improved a lot since then. So I was like, but I, I got Bobby, sixth man of the year. If you can give your best player, substantial rest minutes and obviously he's not the quality player that Giannis is but they're still not missing as much of a beat because he comes off the bench and he can have like 15 to 20 rebounds I'm like he's a monster how are you doing this I, I got Bobby and obviously Evan uh, coach of the year I, I don't think there's any discussion who it should be Mike Brown yep I, I just leave it at that I think that is nice I don't know why Missoula is an option that's just me yeah, I just don't. I mean, you you inherited such a good team. J.B. Bickerstaff, poor guy. I just don't get it. wasn't even thought about last year. Brought the Cavs back into the play in. 50 wins this year. To not even be in the candidate pool. Yeah. Two out, the, two out of the three are right. Like Mike Brown, Mark from Oklahoma City. I, I did not. I don't understand the Missoula thing at all. That's... Your team went to the finals. Mark in Oklahoma City because nobody knows how to say that dude's last name, myself included. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, nobody. But nobody. yeah, Mike, Mike, Mike Brown gets it for resurrecting the Sacramento Kings here in a one-year turnaround job. So, Martin, I know we got a lot of basketball ahead of us. Um, we'll be back to preview different rounds of this and finals and everything else. I know you've got a hard out today. Um, I've got a hard out. I'm running a little bit late for us. So, but um, no, I, I'm excited for for the playoffs to start here in another couple of hours. I'm excited too. I know with a lot of, I'm hoping the playoffs deliver in terms of viewership and competitiveness because the NBA, more than ever, the scrutiny about the load management, the quality of the games and things of that nature have been really in the light. So I'm really hoping the playoffs deliver this year and show that it is still a good product. Well, with that, um, a lot of basketball, a lot of basketball to be played. Um, when time affords us, uh, to, we'll, we'll touch base a little bit on next pod um, about some of the new changes in the CBA. Yes, uh, I think there's some interesting things there. There's the, the new play-in tournament. There's a 65 game minimum to be played. To be eligible for awards. Um, there's a lot of interesting the rookie extension piece there. Um, previously, Cavs couldn't have signed Evan Mobley to a, a rookie extension because you have uh, essentially Donovan Mitchell on one, and Darius Garland on one, and you can't have three on the same team. So yeah, there's agreed. a change, change there, but we'll touch base on all those things after round two and let the games begin. That's all right. With that being said, this is the L7C Podcast. Playoffs are starting this Saturday, April 15th. Take care. Signing out. Let's go Cavs. Thank you for listening to this episode of the L7C Podcast. Be sure to like, rate, review, and subscribe to the channel. Follow us on all social media platforms, and we'll be talking to you guys soon. Take care.